one thing that I reflected when I saw the video for the first time is I thought to myself, oh, you know, your entire career, we'd been at war. You know, I spent more than half my career, we weren't at war. You know, we was in the 90s, the dry years. But I'm thinking, man, this guy's been in the Marine Corps for 17 years, the Marine Corps, and America's been at war for that entire time. You, as you mentioned, you said, you know you got a lot to lose. You knew what could happen. You knew you were risking your battalion command, you know, family stability, the whole nine yards. You bring up that letter from the, from the commandant that he wrote, and you, you, know, you mentioned, did anyone throw their rank on the table and say, we shouldn't give up Bagram? Which, again, you know, going back to the, the Silent Five, which is what McMaster called the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff that worked for LBJ, and you can even hear, you know, that I read in the beginning of guys that reflected back and said, I should have said something. I should have, I should have stood up. Um, you talk about the fact that the people that died, dying in vain, if we don't, uh, you, say, you said, if we don't own up and say, we did not do this well in the end. And, you know, I, I always look at that when someone gets wounded or killed in combat at a, at a bare minimum at a bare minimum, at least we go, okay, we can learn from what happened in the situation. We can pass it on. We can make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's what you're talking about. Um, and you kind of close it out by saying, I've been fighting for 17 years. I'm willing to throw it all away to say back to, to say my, to, to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. And that's it. Um, pretty simple, straightforward message. You hit post. I hit post. You hit post. Um, how long did it take before, you know, you started getting texts from your friends and your senior leadership? Uh, good question. Uh, no one's asked me this question yet. So I walked in the house, didn't say anything. Got upstairs and I was sitting in my bedroom on the bed. My wife was getting ready for bed. She got a text. She said, did you post a video? I was like, yep, I sure did. She's like, you know, I won't say that girl's name. She's like, so-and-so, my friend, is texting me saying you're going viral right now. I was like, oh, really? Going what? Viral oh, right okay. now. So I was like, you should probably watch the video. I told my wife. So she watched it, and she's like, you need to take this down. We're, this is, we're going to get in trouble. Take it down. And I was like, babe, it's already up. Like you can't you can't put the lid back on the bottle. And even if I could, I don't know if I'd want to. And so this is me saying this in this moment. I was like, I, I really believe in what I said in that video. Like I feel very strongly about it. And so my wife then started feeling the gravity of what I had just done, started stressing out. And so then I went downstairs and was sitting on the couch and was just kind of thinking. And that, then all my friends started texting me. One of my friends from Marsoc actually texted me and said, Stu. Everything you said in that video is correct, but it's going to come at way too high of a personal cost and you're not going to change anything. He's like, take it down. And I told him, I was like, no, this is the hill I'm willing to die on. I'm not taking it down. And then I had one of my instructors from AITV who texted me. He was Gunny. He was a section leader. Awesome dude. And he's like, hey, sir, I watched your video and I agree with everything in your video, but our adversaries could take this video and use it against us. And I think you need to think about that, and I think you should take it down. And to him, I said, you know, there, there's probably even some truth to that, but if we can't fix internally what we're doing right now with this conversation that I'm trying to start, then it's all for nothing. And so I guess those are all three true stories where it was like, you know, from my loved ones, from my friends, from the people that worked for me. Were all, I mean, I, and there's like 10 other examples, right? So my phone blew up that night. No one, none of one in my chain of command contacted me that night. So just people that knew me. And, you know, I, I've never, like my wife and I never like slept in separate rooms. Even when we were angry, like early in my marriage, I was like, I'm never, you're never making me sleep on the couch, right? Like this is our house. We sleep together. We're going to deal with stuff. But like that night I slept on the couch and I, I bring that up just to illustrate like that's how stressful it was. It was just like. Was she mad just basically because you, you were you were torpedoing your own career? 
Yeah, like I said, I mean, we had stability like in those three years, probably for the first time in our life. And she thought she was going to be there. I had just taken a battalion commander seat, so she knew I was going to be there for at least another two years. And I only had a year after that till retirement. So she knew she had another three years in North Carolina. She had just started a new job as a teacher. The kids were all in the same school for the first time. She finally had all the stability that she wanted. And then this took her by complete surprise. And she knew that I probably wouldn't even have this job much longer. So every all the stability she thought she had, you know, I, I took from her. Some people asked me about this when it was happening, and I was like on social media or something like that, and I got asked about. Actually, no, I think I was getting interviewed on a news channel, but you know, my response was, um, it, it, I, I guess I drew subconsciously from what Hackworth says when they say, "Oh, do you think you become emotional?" And he's like, "Yes, I have become emotional because I've watched so many good men." die and um i am emotional and that that's sort of what i said i said listen here's a here's a guy that's been at war for 17 years who i guarantee he's lost marines and he's sitting here looking at this situation saying this is i'm not not, i'm not taking this anymore when did you hear from your chain of command the next day so as a battalion commander, I was always the first one in the office. And it just so happened that that day my wife had a medical appointment and I had agreed to drop the kids off at like uh, at school at like, let's call it eight o'clock. And so it was like an abnormal occurrence. <laughs> so that's like the one day I didn't show up early. And so um, I take the kids and so now I don't get into work until like 8.15. And, and as a battalion commander, you don't tell people when you're coming in. You just show up at a normal time. But I had texted my opso next to like, hey, I'm running late. And so I tell you that just to say my CO had stopped by my office and called like three times. <laughs> um, and my opso called me and was like, hey, sir, CO was really looking for you. You should probably call him. And so when I drove in, I got in, I think, at like 8.30 that morning. Seal was actually walking because his buildings, let's say a two minute walk from my building. He was actually walking between the buildings and I saw him. And so I stuck my head out the window and was like, do you want to, you want me to come back to your place? He's like, no, just meet me in your office. So by the time I went and parked my truck and went into my office, like he was already sitting in my office waiting for me. And what did he say? The first conversation between Colonel Emble and I I mean, he, he came off as actually very caring. And keep in mind, this is a career colonel, command selected, that doesn't know me very well. I've never met him before my battalion command, so he's had about six weeks of meetings, maybe like seven meetings with me. So just imagine, I mean, he's another professional, I'm a professional, he doesn't know me very well. It's not like a guy I've been working for mm-hmm. for a couple of years, or even a guy that knows a guy that I know real well. Like, I don't know anyone that really knows me. They're like, we just don't know each other. We hadn't developed much of a relationship. So he's like, so he posted a video. Yes, sir. And he didn't really, there wasn't much small talk. He's like, I wish you would have talked to me first. If you would have talked to me first, we could have worked through some of this. And that's, and he's right. And that's the appropriate way. And I said, yes, sir, I understand. And he's like, I think that this video might be used to run messages that may not have been your intent. I wish you would have thought of that. And again, he was right. And then he just stated, look, there's going to be an investigation that's going to take place. And then based on the investigation, we're going to determine what to do. I'd like you to go home, take the rest of the day, and I will text you on Monday with where we stand. And like all of that was very reasonable, right? Mm-hmm. Very reasonable stuff. Was this already like on Fox News and uh, hitting the news outlets and all that at this point? No. So this was still sort of, you know, your Facebook friends, you know, and then like, what was it? How, how big was it? Right. I this mean, point? I think it probably had received like 10,000 shares. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, by the end of the night, it was picked yeah. up by all the major news stations. So in the morning, like the commandant's office knew about it. I mean, everyone knew about it, mm-hmm. but it, you know, it hadn't been picked up by mainstream media yet, but it, it <laughs> does by the end of the day. But like, it wasn't like everybody knew. Hey, when your friend, your gunny, and your wife were all like, "Hey, dude, take take it down." Yeah, what was the question? <laughs> I mean, they everyone knew. Yeah, and so my CEO left. 
my XO came in and I turned over the the battalion to him and then I went home. And then? And then when I got home, my CO called me an hour later and said, hey, I need you to come back in. I'm sorry to jerk you around. I thought that was weird. I was like, all right. You meet me at my office? He's like, no, meet me in my office. Like, okay. So I meet him in his office and he just looks at me and says, and hands me a piece of paper and says, you've been relieved for cause based on a lack of tr trust and confidence. Do you have any questions? Yes. What do I do now? He's like, I need you to come in tomorrow. He's like, what will probably happen is there will be an investigation and I don't think they're going to keep you here. He's like, they'll probably move you up to Quantico. And General Alford asked to maintain the investigation so that he can take care of you. That's what he said. I was like, okay. So I'm like trying to, trying to like reconcile that in my mind. And, but at the end of the day, like I kind of knew I'd be relieved over it. And I just said, okay, sir. And so I signed the piece of paper that said I had been relieved. I walked out and I actually made a post like immediately after it's still up on my page is my, my Facebook and LinkedIn and just, and I was very appreciative. I said, I think effective of 1400 today, I've been relieved and then my command is doing exactly what I would have done. I'd like to thank them for the opportunity of getting to serve as the AITB battalion commander and I look forward to the next chapter, right? So it's very appreciative post. Obviously something changed for your regimental commander. Somebody talked to him and said, all right, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, and by, just so everyone, just so civilians know what you're talking about, relieved of command means you just got fired. Yeah. So you got fired and, and battalion command is a huge stepping stone and it's a yeah. huge responsibility. So and, the ramifications were I would never get promoted again. And, you know, as you work through it in your mind, I had been relieved, so I had been fired, so I knew I would never be promoted again. But I knew that there was still potential for legal action. Right, so like best case, I am just like a disgraced lieutenant colonel in a cubicle somewhere limping towards retirement. But you know, worst case was I could be separated out via legal action. Um, and so I didn't know, I, it was just unknown at that time. 